What's going on everyone? So welcome to the latest video of mine. Of course, this is a series where I focus on a specific director and rank that specific director's work from worst to best. I've done such directors as Tim Burton, David Fincher, David Lynch, Wes Anderson, the list goes on. Uh, this time, obviously you clicked on this video so you know it, I'm focusing on James Cameron's films and ranking them from worst to best. He's done eight of them. Now, I am joined by Sergey of Skynet Gen. I've worked with him before. I worked with him on my uh, 2000s Academy Award Best Picture and ranking them from worst to best. So, very happy to have him on board. So basically the structure of this review is going to be that Sergey will give his introduction as well as his number 8 to 5. I'll give my 8 to 5, then he'll give his 4 to 1, I'll give my 4 to 1, and then we'll wrap things up. So. All that exposition aside, take it away, Sergey. How's it going everyone? I want to thank Chad for having me on his channel once again, this time for his director series. And today we're going to be looking at James Cameron's filmography, which has been pretty solid. I mean, he hasn't made a movie in like 11 years, but I can't say most of his work is bad. Aside from like one film, he's definitely a visual kind of guy, which sometimes gets in a way with his uh, storytelling and his character development. But for the most part, I think he's made some solid films, and we're going to see that in this list today. And uh, let's start with number eight. And this is going to be a no-brainer, and that is Piranha 2. Yeah, uh, this is pretty bad. Uh, Cameron was working in the uh, special effects department originally, and he was promoted to director when the former director got fired. Eventually, he got fired. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Everyone's getting fired left and right. But uh, at some point, he wanted to break in and remove his credits from the film. Uh, he really didn't want to be credited for this one, uh, wanted always Terminator to be his number one like first film. This one's pretty bad. Uh, it's one of those movies that's so terrible that you want to laugh at. The acting is terrible, the plot is ridiculously thin. Uh, you already know how bad this one's gonna be once the movie starts. You're like a minute in and you have this weird underwater sex scene. It's like, none of it makes sense at all. How the hell is anyone's breathing underwater? Some terrible audio dubbing. Like, why is there audio dubbing in this film to begin with? The effects is another thing that just hasn't aged well. You got flying piranha killing people. The premise itself is pretty ludicrous and it's clearly trying to be a Jaws ripoff. Not a very well made film either. Uh, they show the creatures a little too often. You can tell you're looking at pieces of rubber flying at you. Uh, it's way over the top with the blood and the drama. And I, my only positives with this film I guess would be that you can laugh at it and Lance Herrickson is okay I guess. I, I, feel like he's overacting in this film because probably he's the only one trying in this one. But uh, Cameron must have liked something because he does end up using him in his later films. Number seven is the big blockbuster Avatar. This one has gotten a lot of hate in recent years. Uh, I agree that it has its problems, but I don't think it's that bad. For the time, the effects were really revolutionary and they still hold up pretty well today. Uh, but the hype was really crazy for this film, uh, especially for the 3D. This was like a new thing that was emerging and the craze for it was pretty incredible. Like, again, very visual heavy film that was blowing people's minds and I can see why people liked it. But when it comes to the story, it's very recycled. Nothing really original with the plot. Um, it doesn't flesh out its characters too well. We get cartoonish villains. And the first act is very rough to get through. There's a lot of exposition, uh, just badly written dialogue. The effects look a little video gamey for the first like 45 minutes, especially when they go to the um, old school. Very video gamey. Um, but, you know, aside from these problems, yeah, it's a familiar story that we've seen done better in other films um, that, you know, you question why you would want to return to this film when it's done better in other films. But there's still some praise here. Um, I do like the visuals and the color palette. The score is pretty good. The world building is really nice. And just Cameron's fascination with underwater life is it's on full display and you really appreciate it for that. It's an okay film. Just not one I'm going to watch too often, um, but I do say that if you're going to watch it, the collector's edition on Blu-ray, it's longer, but it does flesh out characters a little bit better, so that one would be the better one to watch. And number six is True Lies. After the success of uh, 
big action films in the 90s, specifically with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the genre kind of got tired and it wanted to switch gears and it became this very self-aware action comedy kind of blend uh, which kind of started I think with The Last Action Hero also with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, this film plays like a James Bond spoof if you think about it. As much as the story is cheesy as hell you have to admit that the action is very well done. There's just you know it keeps you on your toes throughout the action is very tense. We have a, a really great horse and motorcycle chase scene that's very memorable. I really love that scene. Um, it, it, it brings the tension all the way up to the final act, and I think this is why this one's so entertaining to watch. It blends the drama with the action nicely, and the comedy works most of the time, too. Um, I, I feel like even James Bond films later on in the 90s with Brosnan would even copy some things from this film because it does a lot right in the action department. Story, yeah, kind of not so great, but you know, it, it's, it's a fun watch. Like, you cannot lie that you have fun watching this. It's dumb, but it's got a lot of entertainment value. So, I'm still waiting for this one to hit Blu-ray. It is a pretty solid film. And number five is The Abyss. This is one of Cameron's most underrated films, I think. This one captures a great sense of deep sea adventure that I've always appreciated, even when I was watching this uh, at a young age. From the claustrophobic tension to the cool practical effects, uh, great cinematography, a really nice score and tone. Uh, this is just a visual marvel, even 30 years later. Uh, the acting's pretty solid from our two main leads, and it's got clear inspirations from Kubrick and Steven Spielberg. I feel like we don't get these types of slow burn sci-fi films anymore that take their time to explore and tell us a message about like the fate of humanity. Nowadays it's like let's get straight to the action, let's get to the monsters and I feel like this was a refreshing movie that wasn't all about the monsters. We need more movies like this and I'm still waiting for this one to come out on Blu-ray. Uh, this, this one should be watched. It's, it's a pretty good film. All right, thank you very much, Sergey. Um, so, kicking things off with mine, my number eight is Piranha 2, The Spawning as well. Um, he pretty much summed it up perfectly. I mean, this movie doesn't feel at all really like a James Cameron movie. I mean, he got fired 10 days after, I believe it was, that he started, you know, directing. And I mean, it's kind of like Zack Snyder, you know, like, like it came out recently that Zack Snyder didn't fully direct, um, you know, Justice League, but I still stand by my rule that if it says directed by so-and-so, I mean, that person, for me, it's in their filmography, and that's why James Cameron, I count Piranha it to you as his, you know, his work, even though it doesn't feel anything like it, because it's a terrible movie. That's all there really is to it. It's a bad movie on all fronts. That's why it's my number eight. My number seven is True Lies, which I finally got around to watching several months ago. Um, it's, it's okay. Um, you know, it has that famous Jamie Lee Curtis scene, which isn't bad. Um, you know, that's definitely like a standout. It's what the movie's most famous for besides like the action. The action is enjoyable, but I do feel like the length and the characters are just kind of like uninteresting to say the least, but it's a fine film. I understand why a lot of people seem to love this movie, but me personally, I just think it's okay. That's why it's my number seven. And uh, my number six is The Terminator, which I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen in like six, seven years. But when I saw it at that time, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it's a movie really that is like flawless, you know, the way some people might make it seem. I do think that certain things have aged. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the acting when I saw it. I do remember that. But I remember loving the pacing and the action and uh, the practical effects. So, do I want to revisit it at some point? Yeah, sure, maybe. But um, it's it's still enjoyable. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say I hated it because I genuinely enjoyed the Terminator, and I do think that it holds up in certain aspects very well. Others, obviously, not as much. But still, the aspects that it does, it really does. So that's of course my number six. So next up is my number five, which is Avatar. Which I'm not going to lie, when I first saw this movie, I absolutely hated it. Uh, Dancing with Wolves, but in outer space, as my uncle calls it. Um, but I would always come back to it because of the visual effects, the spectacle, the score. Um, for all those reasons, that's why I now admit that I think it's a solid movie. In fact, I went to the record store and um, I saw what they had and I was like, ah, you know, should I pick it up for four bucks? Uh, and I decided that I, I wanted to. And I watched it again recently and I was like... Yeah, I'm glad I picked it up because I can see myself coming back to it to watch it. 
Um, although, of course, I'm going to come back to The Last Samurai a lot more, which I think is a much better movie than this, or even Dance with Wolves uh, to some extent. But Avatar, it's still, it's still a spectacle to behold. It's visually engaging. Um, Acting-wise, it's not the best. Um, Story-wise, again, it's been done before, but by no means is it a bad movie. I do actually very much so enjoy this movie. I am curious to see these sequels whenever they do come out by James Cameron. That's my number five. Um, so now, I'm going to take it back to Sergey. Take it away. Number four is Aliens. At this point, it's going to be a little hard to rank these films because they're all really good movies, so people are going to have them in a little bit in different order. Um, I put this one a little lower because I think some of his other work is a little bit more enjoyable for me, a little bit better. Um, but still, a really great film. I think with Aliens, somehow Cameron was able to direct a good follow-up to an already amazing film in Alien. He flushed out the characters more, he flipped the genre on its head, turning it from a slow burn horror film into a sci-fi action flick with more aliens, more guns, and again, loads of entertainment. Uh, it expanded the universe and gave us once more another female badass, and the effects look phenomenal even today, from the oozing slime to the close-ups of the aliens. It's really impressive, whereas the first film tried to cut corners and hide the mobility of the alien, this film is not afraid to show you everything, and that's really impressive. Sequels ought to be learning a lesson from this film because this is how they should be done. My only issues with this one would be the pacing. It could have been a little bit better, and um, I understand the importance of Newt's character for Ripley's development. Um, I just didn't like her. She's gotten in the way a little too often, but it, she was a necessary addition if you watch the special edition, which I do think is the better edition and the one to watch. At number three is Titanic. Yet another film that has had loads of success. Uh, that has gotten criticism over the years for whatever reason. Uh, the romance, the authenticity to a floating piece of wood has garnered a hatred for this one. Not sure why. Uh, I think this is a very well done film. Cameron is always great at building tension and creating masterwork out of his action scenes. And it takes some time to get to those scenes, but we need some proper character development to get there. So... I don't see why people were having an issue with it, but um, I think the performances are good. Uh, sure, the dialogue sometimes isn't perfect, and the romance can be a little cheesy, but it's a love story. What are you expecting here? This is a film that was about packing emotion and really hitting us hard when the disaster hit, and it did its job. The effects are great, the score adds to the already chilling atmosphere, and it feels like a grand epic on screen. I've seen this countless times and I've never grown tired of watching it. I think people criticize this film more so than films that they love that have the same issues just because of the critical acclaim. And I think people are hard on this movie just like they are on Avatar. I do think this is a way better film than Avatar, but for people just like to hate for some reason. I, I've always liked this film. Um, it was... Number one, the box office for 14 weeks straight. It was the high, one of the most expensive films at the time. This was a very ambitious decision by the director, and I think it really paid off. At number two is The Terminator. The fact that I watched the sequel so much, it, I almost never rewatched this one. And it's a shame, because I think this is a superb film that holds up rather well, especially with a $7 million budget. Uh, some of the things that this film was able to pull off is pretty incredible with the action scenes and you know the one-liners somehow this film has aged pretty well aside from maybe a few effects here and there it, it's easily one of the best 80s sci-fi films that we've gotten Arnold was a perfect casting pick for the role along with Linda Hamilton and Michael Bean the soundtrack is memorable the flashbacks help create a uh, nightmarish kind of threat of, of the Terminators the practical effects are really good like, I was expecting to be far worse than what they are. I'm surprised that they are holding up really well. Yes, the the future-like scenes, you can tell. You got some cardboard cutouts in the distance, and they, they're, they're working with a limited budget, and they had to cut corners somewhere, and that's where it kind of isn't the greatest. The machinery moves awkwardly a bit, but uh, aside from that, I think the effects hold up really well, and the fact that they chose to shoot it in 
The present definitely helped that out. It led to one of the greatest action films of all time, which is my number one pick. And that is the obvious Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Returning with a bigger budget, this film blew me away when I first saw it. The action is tense. The effects look amazing. And thanks to, once again, practical effects, this thing looks great all these years later. Uh, so does the CGI, which at the time was groundbreaking. Uh, the villain is crazy good. Like, we haven't had a villain this good in an action film in a while. Like, this is great. Like, uh, it's very hard to top this villain. Uh, just a true unstoppable force. You're like, how in the world is this thing gonna be killed? It just keeps coming back. And top that off with a score that just adds to the intensity and you're left with one heck of a exhilarating thrill ride. Really love this film. My only nitpick with it would be the pacing sometimes slows down and you want it to return to the amazing action. I guess John Connor can sometimes be an annoying little brat, but um, I can get past that. Uh, just a really amazing film that I have no problem rewatching time and time again. That about does it for my ranking of all of James Cameron's films. I want to thank Chad for having me back on his channel once again. It was really fun to do this video and revisit some of these titles that I haven't seen in years. Um, so really happy that we can do that. I hope we can do this sometime again with more director videos or um, you know ranking videos of any other sort. Um, just make sure to subscribe to his channel and I'm sure he'll provide a link to my channel down below as well if you guys can subscribe. I would really appreciate the support and I'll see you guys next time. All right, thank you very much, Sergey. Um, so now it's my turn. My number four is The Abyss, which I don't have a physical copy of it. Um, I wish that it was on Blu-ray or 4K because after finally watching it during the pandemic, I have to say I, I really liked this movie. I can definitely see that it was inspired by 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, but at the same time inspired a movie like you know Interstellar and Contact. And I think that it's a very enjoyable movie. I want to see the director's cut. I unfortunately haven't. Um, I've heard that's actually a lot better. But the theatrical cut I did think was very enjoyable. It's groundbreaking in terms of special effects. It's got fine performances. It's a very crazy movie in terms of the behind the scenes. The fact that this movie you know, even made it to theaters is amazing because, I mean, when you look up this movie with all the things that happened, it's like, holy cow, that's 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 insane, man. But it's a good movie. I do want to rewatch it. I love, 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 love the final act with some of the things that they do. It definitely, definitely gets a little, uh, almost trippy. And I, I, I really dug that. That's why it's my number four. My number three, I, I can't lie, I've only seen twice. Um, and I know that's kind of sacrilegious considering that I, I saw Alien, you know, a lot. And I, I, I plan to continue watching that. But my uh, my number three is Aliens. Um, look, I've seen Avatar more than Aliens, but you know I, I can at least appreciate and respect that Aliens is a better movie. In terms of entertainment value, obviously I get more out of Avatar, but Aliens is still a good movie. The filmmaking is really good. I really do like how it's different enough from the original Alien that I'm able to say, okay, that's cool. Um, but I can't lie, in terms of like when I watch the franchise again and again, um, I only watch Alien, um, Alien Covenant, and then Prometheus, which is weird because I know a lot of people that would only say that like Alien and Aliens are good Alien movies. But I like Aliens, I respect it, I really like Ripley as a character. Um, I think again that it's a good movie, but it's just not one that I can fully embrace and love. And I'm saying that as someone that, again, saw it twice. Maybe I'll watch it again at some point. But for now, it's a good movie, but by no means is it my favorite. And I know that that's sacrilegious because I know a lot of people that would have Aliens as number one or two, but hey, this is obviously my list. So that's my number three. My number two is Titanic. Um, this was a movie that I wasn't a big fan of when I saw it for the first time like six, seven years ago. But I decided to give it a second chance, and I am very glad that I did, because I actually really enjoy this movie. I think that this movie is really good. I like it a lot better than Avatar. Like These two movies always get compared and contrasted with each other, because done by the same director, both movies that you know broke worldwide records in terms of money. Um, I like Titanic more. The reason why is because you know it has those historical aspects that I found really intriguing. Obviously not the romance itself, but everything around it is pretty historically accurate for the most part. I think that's the crazy, crazy, 
awesome part that James Cameron really knows how to do. He, he's very meticulous with how he directs everything. Um, and it's a movie that, you know, production values alone make it worth watching. Um, I like the romance personally. I've grown to really appreciate it. My thoughts on it have definitely changed. But um, is it a flawless movie? No. But it's still a good movie. And it almost took my number one. But my number one I liked um, a lot more. And um, I'll give you guys my number one, which is, you probably already guessed it, my number one is Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Um, this is one of my all-time favorite action movies. There, there aren't many action movies that can, can beat this, I feel like. It's held up very well. Um, it's almost 30 at the time of making this review. So it's crazy the fact that it's, it's aged so wonderfully in terms of the special effects. CGI was groundbreaking. It holds up. Uh, it's overall just a movie that I can't really get enough of. I always seem to want to come back to it because, uh, I mean, it, it has a lot to offer. You know, it's, it's an emotionally and uh, entertainment value movie that really works on all fronts. Would uh, highly recommend if you haven't seen it for some reason. I would like to also talk about whether I like the director or not. And I would have to say that for the most part, James Cameron is the director that when I see him on the big screen like that name, I know that what I'm about to get myself into is going to be a very entertaining movie um, and oftentimes really engaging. Um, I don't think besides Piranha 2, I don't think he's made like a bad movie per se. I think that every single time he's always trying to push the boundaries of what technology can do. And I understand technology isn't everything with filmmaking, but the fact that James Cameron is so aggressive in terms of wanting to push those boundaries is really admirable, to say the least. And I do think that, you know, he does know how to write characters. I think that his characters are, for the most part, always really engaging and enticing. Um, now, he's not a perfect director. Like, there are definitely cliches that he's done, like, over the years. But for the most part, I do like James Cameron. Is he one of my favorite directors? No. But he's definitely a director that, like I said, um, when I see his name, I will definitely be there. But anyways, guys, um, you know, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, I know that my ranking is definitely probably a lot different than yours, which is fine. But I am curious to hear your guys' thoughts on what your ranking is. Sergey, again, thank you very much for you know being on my channel. Very much so appreciate it. Guys, don't forget the subscription notification bell for Sergey. I'll leave you guys the link down below. And um, as always, thank you very much for watching. And don't forget the subscription notification bell for myself. And I will uh, catch you guys later.